praise the Lord and I welcome all of you for the service I hope you all are ready to worship the Lord let's close our eyes and join together in prayer father God we thank you for this wonderful day Lord Jesus we surrender the entire service in your hand O oh Lord Lord I pray this morning Lord let your Holy Spirit lead us and guide us Lord touch everyone father all those who are watching online father touch each and every person or master let your Holy Spirit touch them Lord let your anointing flow over them O oh Lord and let your leading guide us and uh, every way O oh master I pray right now for every section Lord bless every section let let your name alone be glorified, O oh Father. We thank you and praise you for this day. Let this service be a blessed service for everyone, O oh Master. Lord, we humble ourselves, Lord. We surrender unto your hand, O oh Master. Your name alone be glorified. In Jesus' precious name, I ask this pray. Amen. I hope you all are ready to worship our Lord. Let's sing the famous song, Bless the Lord, O oh My Soul. It's one, uh, one of the favorite songs for everyone. So everyone join with us and worship the Lord.
close your eyes and just, just look to the Lord this evening. Let's praise His holy name. Let's thank Him. Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Your name is blessed, O oh Lord. Your name is blessed, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, we glorify your name, O oh Father. Oh, we praise your name, O oh Father. Oh, your name is above all name. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's join together and sing one more famous song, very old song. And I really love to sing this song. Blessed be your name. Yes, dear people. I know it's a very crucial time. It's a time when we are so much in stress, when we are so much depressed inside our houses. Let's bless his holy name and he's still on throne. Let's declare it together. Amen. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place, the walk through the wilderness. Blessed be your name. Every blessing, every blessing you pour out, turn back to pray. When the darkness closes in. Let's lift our hands wherever you are in your houses, 
Oh, whatever you're doing right now, just leave everything and just lift up your hands and say, Lord, I bless your name this morning, oh Lord. I worship your name this morning, oh Lord. I praise your name this morning, oh Lord, because I know you are still on throne, oh Lord. Oh, you are still on throne, oh Lord. Oh, you are still in control, oh Lord. Oh, Rabba Shikha, Rabba, 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 Shanda, Rabba. Every blessing you pour out, turn back to praise, O oh Lord. This morning, Lord, as we worship you, Lord. Oh, every blessing, Lord. Lord, we are still alive. It's a blessing, O oh Father. Oh, we are not dead, but still praising you. It's a blessing, O oh Lord. We thank you for everything, Lord. And our hearts are shouting with joy, O oh Lord. For you, O oh Lord. For you, O oh Lord. Because you have kept us safe, Lord. You have kept us under your wings, O oh Lord. Even though so many storms come, O oh Lord. But you have kept us safe, O oh Lord. We thank you for that, Jesus. Hallelujah. We worship your name. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Let's everyone join together and sing this very old and very famous song. Shout to the Lord. Yes, this is the time to shout for our Lord because he's in control, people. Amen.
upon us, Lord. Dear people of God, the Bible is full of His promise. And this morning, nothing, nothing, nothing compares to the promise He has given to us. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you for this day, Lord. Oh, we surrender ourselves in your hand, oh Lord. Oh, we just surrender ourselves, Lord. And we believe on your promises, oh Father. We know it's yes and amen, oh Lord. This this service, Lord, we surrender everything in your hand. And we know you are in control, oh Father. It's our hope, oh Lord. It's our treasure, oh Lord. And it's our promise, oh Father. Father God, we thank you for this wonderful service, Lord rest of the service lord we surrender in your mighty hand let your name alone be glorified in jesus precious name we ask this pray amen and amen let's turn our bibles to psalm 46 and as brother aaron comes forward and he's going to read for us let's join together and read for god's glory amen let's all turn our bible to psalms 46 and let's all read it together God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed, and though the mountain be carried into the midst of the sea, though it, its water roar and be troubled, though the mountain shake with its swelling. There is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. The nation raised, the kingdom were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come. Behold the work of the Lord, who has made desolations in the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Amen. Praise the Lord. What a joy to meet you all through this online service. I believe that you are all enjoying at home. Uh, the other way, during this quarantine period, I know that it is not a good time for many. Some people take it, uh, take it as a positive Thing that they can enjoy with the family and planning for future so many good things you people are doing I know uh, whatever God allows in our life everything is for good only our God knows everything those who love God whatever is happening for good only I believe very strongly do you believe if you believe say amen God bless you all my beloved brothers and sisters once again, I greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Be safe. And if you, you know, need any prayer request or anything, please contact us. We are ready to pray for you all the time. Don't forget to join online prayer every day morning and evening. Also, coming Wednesday, we have a special uh, prayer meeting. I will be joining with you all to pray with you. This prayer meeting will be almost one hour time. And please make sure and uh, um, be ready to take part in it. Also, uh, coming days, coming week also, there is a youth meeting, online youth service. We will send you the flyers. You just to follow and the Lord will bless you more and more. Once again, I bless you all. Today, we have a guest speaker in our midst. Our dear brother Vincer is going to speak to us. He is not a new, to, uh, new person to us. He is one of a family member, that's what I can say. Uh, God used him for many, many people. This uh, morning also, God is going to use him very mightily. If you open your hearts, if you open your mind, and the Lord will speak to you, is ready to speak to you. Are you ready to receive the word? If you are ready to receive the word, I tell you, 
God is going to touch you completely, completely. So surrender for the word. Open your hearts. Open your ears. The Lord is going to speak to you. Amen. Uh, right after the message, I will come and pray for you all. The Lord will bless you more and more. Take care. God bless you. Listen God's word now through our dear brother, Vincent. Let's put our hands together to welcome him. God bless you. Greetings in Jesus' name. I hope and pray all of you are fine and keeping safe. Even though churches are not able to meet during this period of lockdown, the word of God cannot be locked away. Truth will bring freedom. I praise God for this opportunity and also thank Pastor Kings and his church leaders for inviting me to share God's word online today. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to learn from your word. We pray that your presence will be with us and your Holy Spirit minister to us. Pray, Lord, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts will be acceptable to you. In Jesus' name, Amen. The title for my message today is God Remembers. 2 Kings chapter 20 verses 2 and 3. I'm reading for the, from the NIV version. Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord. Remember, O Lord, how I have walked before you faithfully and with wholehearted devotion and have done what is good in your eyes. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. We are very familiar with two great kings, father and the son in the Bible, who you always read and listen to sermons on them. The first one is King David, a brave army commander, a singer, a musician, who God said was a man after his own heart. And the second one is King Solomon, who was known for his wisdom tremendous riches and building the temple of God in Jerusalem. I also know that you know another king that is Pastor Solomon Kings. Today we are talking about the kings from the Bible. Today I want to also introduce another king. We seldom hear or read about him. We can find him in 2 Kings chapter 18 right up to chapter 20. And also in 2 Chronicles chapter 29 to chapter 32. Hezekiah trusted in the Lord, the God of Israel. There was no one like him among all the kings of Judah, either before or after his time. You can find that in 2 Kings chapter 18 verse 5. In the area of trusting God, King Hezekiah was number one. King Hezekiah replaced his father, King Ahaz, as king of Judah when he was 25 years old. His father, however, did evil in the eyes of God. But King Hezekiah, on the other hand, did right in the eyes of God. You can find that in 2 Kings chapter 18 verse 3. It simply meant that King Hezekiah was a righteous man. His righteousness comes from the love and the fear of God in his life and a passion to please God only. So let's see, what did King Hezekiah do that was right in the eyes of God? And through this man, what God wants to speak to us today. Now the first point is, Hezekiah honored God. In the first day of the first month, he opened the doors of the temple of the Lord and repaired them. Just look at this. Immediately after upon being made the king, the first duty for Hezekiah was to take care of the things of God. Such love and honor for God, his first priority. In 2 Chronicles chapter 29, verse 4 and 5, it says that he brought in all the priests and the Levites an instrument 
and instructed them to consecrate themselves and then consecrate the temple. He wanted them to clean, purify and sanctify the temple and prepare it to be opened for sacrifice and for worship. In 2 Chronicles 29, 6-9, King Hezekiah recalls the unfaithfulness of their fathers in doing evil in the eyes of the Lord, turned their backs, did not offer any offerings and shut down the temple. This was the reason God was angry with Judah and Jerusalem and they were killed or taken into captivity. King Hezekiah wanted to make a covenant with God so that God's anger will turn away from them. He was indeed a reformer. He wanted his people to only worship the God of Israel. As part of this purification and sanctification, it says that he removed the pagan shrines, smashed the sacred pillars and cut down the Asherah poles. He broke the bronze serpent that Moses has made because the people of Israel had been offering sacrifices to it, including his fathers. And we find this in 2 Kings chapter 18, verse 4. And once the entire temple was purified, the king worshipped God by offering animal sacrifices and through music and singing. The temple was officially opened and he invited all the people of Judah and Israel far and near to come and worship God in this temple. They also celebrated Passover in the second month. Everyone came, consecrated themselves and ate the Passover meal. They celebrated joyfully and even extended the Passover for another seven days. What about us? What is our priority? The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Don't you know that you yourselves are temples, God's temple, and that God's spirit dwells in your minds and in your midst? Just like how King Hezekiah purified and sanctified the temple, God is looking at you and me. If we will remove or throw away whatever that is not right in God's eyes, whatever that is hindering us, stopping us or distracting us from worshipping the true God and Him alone. The Bible tells us in John chapter 4 verse 24, God is spirit and those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and truth. We have to look into our lives to see what is not right in the eyes of God. How is our lifestyle? Is there some, something, someone that has become an idol in our lives? Has replaced God even without us knowing it? Or are we not sure where God is in our lives? Somewhere in the corner of our hearts or minds? Most times these things do not happen on purpose but slowly takes hold in our lives. If we are not careful and vigilant, it will affect us. My dear brothers and sisters, just like King Hezekiah, let's honor God by giving him first place in our life. We must be ready to throw away or destroy whatever comes in between God and us. God says in Exodus chapter 20 verse 3, you must not have any other God but me. We must love our God with all our heart, with all our soul and with all our mind. Let's be careful not to let sin or our job, our wealth, our position, our hobby, social media, television, family or even ministry to come, to become gods in our life and hinder our worship 
in the Lord God Almighty. King Hezekiah made a covenant with God. Let us also make a covenant with God that we will honor God with our words, with our thoughts and with our deeds and that we will walk right in the eyes of God. Secondly, Ezekiah trusted God. In verse 2, in, in, in 2 Kings chapter 18, verse 5, it says that Hezekiah trusted in the Lord, the God of Israel. He believed everything that was written about the God of Israel. There was no one like him among all the kings of Judah, either before or after his time. He was very special. We saw earlier that after the temple was purified and consecrated, it was officially opened. And King Hezekiah invited all the people from Judah and Israel to come to Jerusalem to worship God in the temple and celebrate the Passover. Now, some of them who came were ceremonially unclean and could not purify themselves. But they ate the Passover meal, which was against what was written in the books. But King Hezekiah in 2 Chronicles chapter 30 verses 18 19, 19 prays this wonderful prayer. May the Lord who is good pardon everyone who sets their hearts on seeking God, the Lord, the God of their ancestors. Even if they were not clean according to the rules of this sanctuary. And this is what he prayed. I want to pray this again. I want to say this prayer again. May the Lord who is good pardon everyone who sets his heart on seeking God the Lord, the God of their ancestors, even if they are not clean according to the rules of the sanctuary. And in verse 20, the Bible says that the Lord heard Hezekiah and healed the people. Hezekiah had complete faith in God's goodness and faithfulness. And in the next incident, we read that after capturing Israel, the king of Assyria called Sennacherib was eyeing Judah as Judah was very prosperous. However, King Ezekiah rebelled against the king of Assyria and asserted independence. As until that time, Judah was under the king of Assyria. Ezekiah did not want Judah to go into captivity like Israel. And you can read from 2 Kings chapter 18 verse 13 to chapter 19 verse 13 how Sennacherib sent his commander to advise King Hezekiah. The commander challenged the power of the Lord God of Israel and mocked the worship in the temple. The commander spoke against the Lord God and also against Hezekiah and advised him to surrender to the king of Hezekiah, uh, king of Assyria as the army was mightier and they have defeated other nations easily. He even encouraged the people to turn against Hezekiah. But King Hezekiah trusted in the Lord God. He knew that the Lord God of Israel is mighty in power and will deliver them. In 2 Kings chapter 19 verse 14, Hezekiah goes to the temple of the Lord and in verse 19 prayed, asking God to deliver them from the hands of the king of Assyria so that the kingdoms on earth may know that you alone, O God, O Lord, are God. Now, King Hezekiah wanted God to deliver him and Judah so that everybody, everyone, all the kingdoms in the world will honor the Lord God. His intention was right before God. It was not his personal glory or revenge, but to glorify God. Now, he knew he was no match for the king of Assyria. 
but he also knew that his God was bigger than his problem. Hezekiah was a great man of faith in the midst of a crisis. And even when circumstances was against him, he still had faith. He knew in his heart that God was his ever-present help. God hears the prayers of King Hezekiah and responded through prophet Isaiah. And we can see that in 2 Kings chapter 19, verse 20 to verse 34, that eventually the angels of God put to death the Assyrian army. Then Sennacherib withdrew and went away. He died later a cruel death. <coughs> he was murdered by his own sons who cut him down. What a death for someone who was very powerful and arrogant against God and his servant Hezekiah. Now what about you, my dear brothers and sisters? Do you trust God wholeheartedly? Or trust in your own strength, your own knowledge, money, property, positions, friends, connections with powerful people. The word of God tells us in Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. Go to God for help when you have problems, whether it is health problems, financial problems, family issues, work issues, whatever burden you have, cast it on him. Like the psalmist says in Psalm 55, 22, cast your burden on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous to be removed. Our God is our refuge and strength. An ever-present help in trouble, Psalm 46, 1 says. And in Psalm 118, verse 8, it is better to take refuge in the Lord than trust in man. God will hold our hands, as in Isaiah 41, 13 says, For I, the Lord your God, will hold your right hand, saying to you, Fear not, I will help you. King Hezekiah was in a crisis. The nation of Judah was in trouble, but God delivered them. Because of one righteous man's prayer and his complete faith and trust in the Lord his God. Thirdly, Hezekiah obeyed God. When the temple was restored and consecrated, we see in 2 Chronicles chapter 29 verses 25 and 26, it reads, He stationed the Levites in the temple of the Lord with cymbals, harps, and lyres in the way prescribed by David and God, the king's seer, and Nathan, the prophet. This was commanded by the Lord through his prophets. So the Levites stood ready with David's instruments and the priests with their trumpets. See how Ezekiah obeyed God right through the details of what was written in the book of law. Everything King Hezekiah did with regards to the temple or worship, sacrifices, offerings, he obeyed what was written in the book of law. We also can see in 2 Chronicles chapter 31 verse 2 till verse 19, King Hezekiah ensured that everything that was written in the book of law was strictly followed, not only in Jerusalem, but throughout Judah, regarding sacrifices, offering, tithes, distributing the contributions to everyone who were uh, listed in the genealogical records. He made sure that he followed everything that was written in the book of law. What Ezekiah did, was good and right and faithful before the Lord his God. In 2 Chronicles chapter 31, verse 21, the Bible says, in everything that he undertook in the service of God's temple and in obedience to the law and the commands, he sought his God and worked wholeheartedly 
and so he prospered. What about us? What about you and me? How much do we obey God? In everything or only something? What about the Ten Commandments? Are we serious in obeying God? We want protection, we want healing, we want our business to grow, we want a promotion, we want a higher salary, we want a, a, a good husband, a good wife, a good mother-in-law, we want all the blessings. But we do not seek God and obey God wholeheartedly. We want God to understand us that we also need to do what we like to do. Hezekiah obeyed God and the commands that and he prospered. The Bible says that obedience is better than sacrifice. For Samuel chapter 15 verse 22 and in John chapter 14 verse 15 Jesus says if you love me you will keep my commandments. We cannot declare we love God but we don't obey the commands. We cannot please man and please God at the same time. Hezekiah chose to please God by obeying God wholeheartedly. What is your choice? Finally, in 2 Kings chapter 20 verse 1, we see that King Hezekiah was sick. And God through prophet Isaiah told him that he was going to die and get prepared. King Hezekiah turns to God again and prays a wonderful prayer in verse 3. Remember, O Lord, how I have always been faithful to you and have served you single-mindedly, always doing what pleases you. Let me read that again. In verse 3, Remember, O Lord, how I have always been faithful to you and you served and served you single-mindedly always doing what pleases you then he broke down and wept bitterly God did not forget God did remember all the things that Hezekiah did to glorify God to honor God then almost immediately God hears King Hezekiah's prayers and in verse 5 it says he says to, 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 to uh, Isaiah go back to Hezekiah the leader of my people and tell him this is what the Lord the God of your ancestor David says I have heard your prayer and seen your tears I will heal you and three days from now you will get out of the bed and go to the temple of the Lord and we see in verse 6 that God added 15 years to his life. God answered many prayers of King Hezekiah, rescued him, honored him, blessed him and also extended his life for 15 years and a peaceful death. Even in our life, there may be people like Sennacherib who will put fear in us because they may be strong and powerful, rich in high positions, more intelligent than us, more knowledgeable than us. Some may challenge our faith in Jesus, discourage us from trusting and following God or even to deny Jesus. Or we may face a mountain like problems, maybe in our job, our family, our relationships, our health, our business, our finances, or even in our church ministry and so on. What will be our response? Will we go to God in prayer and leave everything to Him? Trust Him? Or we try to find solution by ourselves? Just as God remembered and answered the prayers of King Hezekiah, God will remember us and is ready to answer our prayers. But we must honor God. We must make the Lord our God our priority. The only one we worship and no one else. We must only please him and no one else. If we love him with our heart, soul and mind, we will honor him with our life. We must trust in the Lord, our God, wholeheartedly. Man will disappoint you, but our God is the same yesterday, today and tomorrow. Trust in him so much 
that there will be no one who trusted God more than you. In whichever city, state or country that you are, our God is bigger than any problems in front of us. Trust Him. And we must remain faithful to the God in everything that we do. We must obey all the commandments of God. There cannot be any compromise when it comes to the things of God. So my dear brothers and sisters, let us ponder on this word today. God will remember when we cry out to him. Just like how he remembered King Hezekiah's prayer and tears, God will remember our prayers and our tears. Let's live a life of righteousness, totally committing ourselves to faithfully walk in the right way in the eyes of God so that God's name can be glorified. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for these words that you have given us today. Thank you for ministering to us, Lord. Help us, help us, Lord. Give us the faith. Give us the strength to honor you, to trust you, and to obey you. Lord, we pray that you will continue to be with us. We thank you for the many prayers that you have answered. The many tears that you have seen. We know, Lord, as we continue to pray to you, to cry out to you, you will listen to our prayers. Just like how you listen to the prayers of King Hezekiah, you will listen to our prayers. We thank you. We thank you for listening to our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. I believe the wonderful word touched everyone. I believe God has spoken to you very clearly this morning. Indeed, it's a good word for me as well. I was watching so closely. The Lord is speaking to my heart. Dear beloved people, it's a timely message for you as well, I believe. As a pastor, I can tell you that. If you commit for the word, and the Lord will bless you more and more. Now I am going to pray for you all. Loving Heavenly Father, we come to your throne of grace. Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful word right now, Lord. I bless each and every one of our church members. Also, whoever is watching this program, oh God. Lord, you bless them. Keep them under your shadow. Especially, Lord, because of this coronavirus, Lord, so many people are facing different kinds of issues in their life. They have a lot of problem in their life. Some people lost their job. Some people, they could not receive their full salaries. But this is a very challenging time for us, oh God. Lord, I know that you are in control. You take care of everything. Even in this situation, you will bless us. You will take care of us. Send your angels to serve us, oh God. Keep each and everyone under your shadow. Keep away from this coronavirus. Lord, when the time comes, everything is settled. When we face each, and each other, we want to glorify your name. Until that, Lord, protect everyone. Keep them safe. Keep away from every evil. Keep away from all kinds of seasonal sicknesses, oh God. From my heart, I bless everyone. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, love of Father, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us today and forevermore. Amen and amen. Let us raise our hands and sing this chorus before we close this prayer. Hallelujah. Pray for us. We are also praying for you all the time. Our loving God will be with you each and every moment of your life. I bless you once again.
take care god bless you bye bye